Welcome. I'm Tiffany Long here with Kelly Rogers, and we are excited today to present a special haunted episode of Engineering Legends. He opened the chemical room door and behind him, a little girl about eight years old appeared and was singing to her. He watched her disappear seconds later, and he was very shaken up by this. They called from his from his house or whatever and, and, and to notify him that he had had a heart attack. He had a heart attack that morning. So he never really showed up for work. But people here say that they actually saw him here at the plant. Kelly and I both love anything spooky or paranormal and have been looking forward to this episode since we started the podcast. Both of us love to tour haunted locations, but neither of us have ever toured a haunted water or wastewater facility. Kelly, wouldn't that be fun? Oh yeah, I would love that. I'm one of those people that loves like when a scary movie or a good ghost story makes me want to sleep with the light on. Um, love being creeped out. I'm not sure what I would do though if I saw an actual ghost. Yeah, I'm right there with you on that one. But today, we're going to hear two stories from guests who have seen ghostly apparitions at water treatment plants. Our first story begins in El Paso, Texas, at the W.E. Robertson Water Treatment Plant. The facility is situated along the Rio Grande River and is on the U.S. and Mexico border. For decades, employees at the plant have been sharing ghost stories of spirits that have been sighted at the Robertson plant, also known as the canal plant by locals. Today, we'll be speaking to Superintendent Ruben Montez, who has heard many stories over the years. He was a skeptic until he had his own ghostly experience. You won't want to miss this. The plant was built in uh, 1943, uh, the original plant, which is plan one. Uh, yeah, it's basically two plants into one. Uh, each plant has uh, the, the capability to treat uh, 20 million gallons. So between uh, both plants, we can produce 40 million gallons a day of, of a potable water from, from surface water, from water that we get from the Rio Grande. Before you um, experienced what you're going to describe at the plant, um, did you believe in ghosts or the supernatural? I believe that there is true. Some, I still believe that it is true, and, and they're out there. When did you first hear about the plant potentially being haunted? Did you hear about it first, or did you experience something strange first? Uh, I kind of heard about it first uh, when I started working here. Uh, I was one of the youngest guys there, and uh, uh, they, they told me that uh, there were stories about, you know, uh, people seeing things at the plant, and, and just to keep an eye out for it. And, and I really didn't pay much attention to it. Uh, but uh, later, it, 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 I went through an experience where it kind of like really caught my attention. Uh, I was on, on graveyard. It was, I think, around one in the morning or so. And uh, I had to go down to station one and, and, and get a, a, a reading, a meter reading. And when I was doing that, I, I, I felt, a, you know, like, when you feel, you have this feeling that somebody's watching you, you know, and, and, and I always hear that, that the hair on the back of your neck stands up and well, all that happened to me. And and then I kind of looked at the corner of my eye and, and, and I actually saw somebody sitting on the pipe. There's a 20 inch line that, that sends water out into the distribution system. And the number that I was getting is actually the number of that meter, how much water we pumped out through the system for 24 hours. And, uh, and I looked at the corner of my eye and I saw somebody sitting there and uh, I just got the number and turned around and headed out. I wasn't going <laughs> to investigate any further. Did it look like an actual person or yes. did it look okay? okay. Yes, it did. It, it did look like an actual person uh, just just sitting there uh, on the pipe. And he was looking towards where I was. Uh, and that's the time that I really, I really caught my attention and well something something's going on uh i kind of blame that on being on graveyard you know that kind of as an excuse of i would my mind just playing tricks on me or something like that but 
But no, I have a feeling that if there was something there, I mean, you just kind of feel it. You, you, you feel things like that. So I know you heard some other um, stories from other folks as well. Can you share some of the stories you've heard? Sure. Um, I, again, those are just things that, uh, I mean, uh, there's there's some, some like at least three of them, I, I was part of it, so I, I, I can say that I was there. Uh, another one that's... Uh, uh, it's really it was really uh, the other person I got to see that he was scared is that uh, we were working uh, this was like on a 4 to 12 shift we were doing the evenings and I think it was like almost around it's around 10 at night around there and it was just three of us one guy takes care of one plant another guy the other plant and then the, the shift operator oversees the whole operations pretty much and I had just run my my samples, my filter samples, my uh, my ten o'clock, and and then the the shift leader says, uh, "Hey, let's go back to the other plant to plant two because we were at plant one." He says, "You're done with your samples." He goes, "Yeah, I'm done with them." He says, uh, "Let's go back to plant two and uh, and talk to Henry, see what he's doing." Henry was our other partner, so we start walking over there, and we see him that he's by the filters at plant two by filter number three. And then uh, we keep walking. We went walk through the primaries, made it all the way to the chemical building. By that time, Henry started walking towards the chemical building also. So we actually met there. And then when he usually walked with his head down, his head uh, looking down, and when he got there, he raises his head, and then he sees both of us, and then he quickly turns around to the filter. And then he's all, he says, uh, were you just told earlier? He goes, no, I was coming from over here from plant one. And he goes, no, somebody was over there. They go, no, we, we were just over here. And he says, no, you're messing with me. They go, no, I'm not. I'm serious. I was just running my samples. Robert asked me if we could go over there with you, check what you were doing. That, that's all. And then he says, no, no, one of you was over there. And then Robert Chavana, he's the guy that had already been here when I started. He had been here for about seven years. He's the one that told them. He says, was there a guy leaning against the handrails at, at, at filter three? And then he goes like this, oh, you saw him too? He says, no, but is that the guy you saw? He says, yeah. He says, don't worry about it. That's just a guy that you do see every now and then. <laughs> but <laughs> but he was, he turned out, he was all white. He was all, I mean, he was scared. Another time was, uh, I was working with uh, the guy in charge of the SCADA system, and we were up on the fifth floor where the SCADA servers are and all that. And uh, we had to do the accomplishments every every week on, on the Mondays. We had to do what we did the, the previous week. I was in, I was sitting in front of the, across the desk from him, and and so he had a, a view of that of that door uh, that was opened a little bit, and he jumped all of a sudden, you know, and and and, and I mean his, his his facial expression changed immediately. He jumps out and starts running out of the the room. So I get up and also run behind him, and then he says, because uh, there's there's a stairway going up up the building up to the the sixth floor. We have stairs from the bottom all the way up. So he starts running, uh, and then he, he I'm running behind him, and he yells at me. He says, go up the stairs. He says, just go up the stairs. Go, okay, so and then he takes off down the stairs. So I go up the stairs to the roof. I didn't see anything, so then I come back down. And then he went running down, and he ran into another guy that was walking up, and he was asking him, he says, hey, did you see anybody? He says, no, I didn't see anybody. He says, are you sure? He says, no, nobody. I just saw you coming down. So then he starts walking back up. Here by this time I come down from the from the rooftop and then I said, What's wrong with you? What happened? He goes, You didn't see you didn't see anybody? He goes, No, I didn't see anybody. I went all the way up to the roof. And there's no way you can jump up of the six stories up here. Uh so he says, No, there was nobody up there. So well, what happened? He says, I saw somebody peek through the through the through the door. They just went like that and, and looked out into the into the door opening. And he, I mean, he swears by it. He's, I saw somebody, somebody was there. And, and that's another incident that, you know, I was, I was there when it happened. And, and, and that's, a, you know, he, nothing had ever happened to him before. And, but he, you can tell that he was, he, 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 he was, uh, yeah, that caught his attention quick. And, uh, and then another one was, uh, th this one, I, I wasn't here for that one, but my supervisor back then, uh, you know, we have uh, engineers that come and, 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 and visit the plant whenever we need to do some upgrades or whatever they need. They come and look at the plant, the facilities, see what we need to do. And 
so they can do their scope of work and all that. And, and that day it happened, I had already left. And the following day, uh, my, my uh, supervisor, his name's uh, Ruben Rodriguez at the time, he tells me, he says, hey, you know what? Uh, there was this engineer, uh, a, a female that came from, from Hawkins to, he was going to show him the project they were going to uh, plan on working on. And he says, and this is after you guys had left. He goes, yeah, I don't remember seeing anybody when, when I when I left. He says, yeah, well, well she uh, she showed up and, and I took her around the plant. And he says, when we were coming up the stairs, she needed a restroom. So I asked her, well, you know, you can wait till we go to the, the main office over there and, and, and you can use that one. Or we have this one here. But uh, this was used by the employees, but everybody already left. You know, we're done for the day. If you want, you can go ahead and use this one. I'll stay in guard out here. And he says that, uh, yeah, she said, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll go in here. So she went in there. And so he just waited outside for her to come out. And when she came out, that uh, all of a sudden she just told him, says, you have ghosts here, huh? And he had never told her anything or nothing. And then he goes, yeah, he says, there's there's a lot of talk about people seeing stuff here. He says, yeah, he says, there's, there's one in there right now. Says where <laughs> in the in the restroom. <laughs> so he says, so why? Uh, well, is it a guy? He says, yeah, it's a guy. He says, well, what is he doing? No, he's just sitting in there. And then he has, and she he asked her, he says, how is he dressed? He says, no, he's just dressed regular, like 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 any regular person. But that's all she said. And then he kind of tried to get more from her. And apparently, she through her life she kind of uh, sees things. She says mm. it's not the first time that she's seen seen one. So I don't know. It's just one of those things that I, mean, I really don't think he would lie to me because just because of how long I've known him, I don't think he would make up a story like that. And uh, But it's just something odd that I mean, when I heard that, I said, Man, you know, that, that just kind of another, I guess, another sign that, that there is something happening here. Do you have any theories on who the ghost is? Uh, it, it sounds no. like it's just one that people are seeing, right? It, the same one over and over. It seems okay. to be the, the same one. And, and, and like I was saying, the, the original, the, 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 one of the, the, the first stories that they told me is that apparently, apparently this gentleman, you know, showed every day for work, whatever. And, and that that day they said that they actually saw him here at the plant. That I mean... And that's what I was saying. It was probably a time when there was no punching in, no punching out. People just showed up. But somebody said that, hey, uh, they just called that. I think his name was Armando, if I remember correctly. They said that uh, they called from his from his house or whatever and, and, and to notify him that he had had a heart attack. He had a heart attack that morning. So he never really showed up for work. But people here say that they actually saw him here at the plant. Oh, wow. So that's what makes it. And a lot of people think that it's that guy. Uh, that's dedication to your job. That, that's what <laughs> I was telling this guy. That's the kind of dedication we need. I mean, people are going to be showing up here after they're gone. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, that, and people through the years, they said that, 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 that's him, that he's just coming back. And, and the good thing is that nothing really, you know, like you see in the movies where, you know, people get attacked or, you got some bad ghosts out there. This one must be a good one because I've never heard of anything bad really happening. So that's good. Yeah, it sounds like it's just mischievous. Like, yeah. you know, just kind of playing pranks and having a little fun. Keeping an eye and, on and, things. And sometimes uh, things happen in the plan. You know, it's an old plan. Uh, we, we try to do as much maintenance on it as we can every year. Uh, sometimes things happen, uh, happen that we don't have an explanation for. So people will just say, ah, oh, it's, it's the ghost. It's the ghost. And they just... Blame it on the ghost. Well, Ruben, we really appreciate your time today. These are great stories, and I think um, people enjoy listening to them for sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Next, we move across the country to New England to chat with Bob Melanson from the New Bedford Water Department in Massachusetts. Bob is going to share his experiences at the Quiticus Water Treatment Facility, which is located off Route 105 in Rochester. 
The original plant began operating in July of 1899 and has a rich history. The building is constructed from large gray stone and looks every bit the part of a haunted New England building. We'll hear about how the plant's original chief pumping engineer, who died a day prior to retirement, continues to haunt the facility, but he's not the only ghost to haunt the halls of this plant. Our building the main building a long time ago was built in 1899. And this has two 48 inch mains water supply from our five ponds. We actually get it from five ponds, the drinking water. But this pumps also to our 75 million gallon facility in the High Hill Reservoir in Dartmouth. That was built in 1899 also okay and then in 1974 and it was completed finally in 1977 of november that year our new building facility here the new quiticus water treatment plant treats the water for the city and uh sends it out to that 75 million gallon reservoir and also to all the citizens of New Bedford, approximately 100,000. So before all of this came about, did you believe in ghosts or the supernatural? I did somewhat. Um, But I did not expect to experience anything over here. I just thought it's a wonderful place to work. We're doing a wonderful uh, a product to uh, giving a wonderful product to the citizens of New Bedford, clean, safe drinking water. And it's a great area to work near, near five farms. I didn't think of the supernatural aspect then. So when did you first learn or hear about um, the plant being haunted? That's what threw me for a loop. So right after I started, fellow co-workers started telling me this place is haunted. The old building, not the new building, the 77 building where we are in now that was complete. The old 1899, they said, is definitely haunted. And I laughed about it. I <laughs> laughed about it. I said, I, I don't think so. But you're, you're welcome to your beliefs. <laughs> So when did your mind change about it? All right. Um, When I went down to the old 1899 building um, one night and I was, uh, I was checking my paperwork. This was around midnight up on the old mezzanine floor, second floor. Now, right near me is a picture of the, uh, if, if the first pumping engineer, Adoniram Stonegus. He looks like Wyatt Earp. We're going to send you a picture of him. <laughs> His picture is on the wall. I'm about 10 feet from him, all by myself in that building. And the door right behind me, which was wide open, slammed shut. When it did that, um, the hair stood up on my neck and back. I couldn't believe it. And I reopened that door and ran down the stairs and up to the main building that was built in 1977. And I told my other co-worker what just happened. And he said, I told you so. (laughs) Another time, um, I went back down to that building. Now, this was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and everybody had just left. And my other co-worker and I went into that old building to uh, check our paperwork, and we were standing there looking on our notes in the garage. The garage doors closed. There's no one around us. And we heard a woman scream right next to us. But no one was there. 
my coworker said, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. He, I, he said, I can't take this. I'm getting out of here. Was it and loud? It was loud. Wow. It was a very loud scream. Not a whisper, not hoarse, very clear and loud. And no one's there. It's, it's just the two of us. And uh, it, it, we could not believe it. So he left and I left, went back up to the other building. And um, we talked about it the next day, but what could we say? There was nothing more to say. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't see anyone, you know? I have another one. A coworker of mine, this was uh, not long ago, about a year ago. His previous job was Air Force Security. He was working with me on a summer night last summer, about 7 p.m. at night. It's broad daylight out there. It doesn't get dark till 830. And he told me we were in the new building, the plant built in 1977. This is what threw me for a loop. He told me he was going to fill our chemical tanks in the other room. I said, okay. I was doing samples in the other room. A minute later, he came back, sweat all over his face. And he told me, look, I want you to know first, I don't believe in ghosts or any of that stuff. But, but he said, he opened the chemical room door and behind him, a little girl about eight years old appeared and was singing to him. Oh, I just got chills. (laughs) Isn't that So he actually saw an apparition. An apparition. And... He watched her disappear seconds later, and he was very shaken up by this when he was talking to me. And I told him, show me. Let's go back. So we went right back to the room, and there was nothing there. He told me she was singing right here, right here outside this door. I said, what about families? We have a main road about 500 feet away, families walk by. And I said, could it have been one of them walking up to, up to you from, from the road? He said, no way. She disappeared in, right in front of my face. I said, oh, man. I said, well, I've never experienced anything like that. Well, then things got weirder. He went outside the main building to his truck for his cell phone to call his friend and tell him about it. He ran up a minute later. He was sweating again and told me he and his friend on the phone heard a scream right next to his truck, but no one was there. I said, wait a minute. Is your friend still on the phone? He said he was. And I talked to his friend who confirmed he heard a loud scream while talking to his co my coworker. I said, let's get out there. We went right outside, nothing, nothing. After that incident, he put in his two weeks notice the next day. Oh, (laughs) it really freaked him out. (laughs) Yeah. Now, here's the most recent. A few months ago, a co-worker went down to the old 1899 building, again, to get readings. And he was outside a scale room that we use to measure chemicals. And he heard footsteps heading towards him. And he heard someone step on the scale, causing the metal plate in the scale to make a loud clunking sound. He checked the room immediately. No one was there. This is a locked, alarmed building. He was afraid, but he kept going to the next room to bleed air tanks. We have air tanks in this room. And what you do is you put a metal can under the tank and you open the valve to get water, the moisture out of the tanks. Well, he got the can in his hand. He's holding it. And something pulled it right out of his hand straight to the floor. 
He tried to pick wow. Vicky. How about that one, huh? <laughs> and he tried to pick the can up. He couldn't. He couldn't budge it. He ran up the, out of that room to the main building and told me about it. And oh I said, goodness. that's unbelievable. I said, let's go back down again. Show me. He said, <laughs> I don't want to go down there. I said, I'm with you. Let's go down there. So we went down there. There was the can. I picked it right up off the floor. This time, no trouble. I want you to realize, too, something. Those air tanks, the door that slammed on me, the air tanks and Mr. Negus's picture are no more than 15 feet apart. So um, that is something. Now, I want to say something about Mr. Negus before I, I, I tell you more stories. I now, you're talking about people. the... Now, who is he? He he was the original chief pumping engineer? Correct. Okay. Who had worked here for years. Add, uh, add Don the Ram Stone Negus. So... I was told after this, because I contacted an engineer and he came to the plant and he knew all about him. He said, this man works many years here. And on his last day of work, when he came here to retire, he went and spoke to his men and he died right in this building. Um, oh, wow. Isn't that something? That is, so he decided to stick around. That was, I think this is why a lot of these things are happening. And now, do you think it's all him? Because, you know, you saw the little girl, too. Or do you, why are, why are there multiple exactly, ghosts? I wonder. <laughs> exactly. You just, you just said a good one there. It is not all him. That little girl, that's one. And I'm going to tell you another one in this building that happened, uh, again, several months ago. So, again, around 4 o'clock, everyone leaves. I'm still here. My shift is till 7. Now, I am by myself. And at 4 o'clock, they all left. The building's locked. It's alarmed. We did have contractors upgrading the plant. And... Um, but they had all left, I thought. Well, I went into the chemical room to fill tanks. And as I was filling a chemical tank, I looked over and I saw an old man with white hair and old style work clothes. You know, they're the gray overalls from the 1930s. I don't know if you saw any of your father or family or grandfathers in these old farmers work clothes. That's the clothes this guy had on. And I said, that's strange to myself. What is this contractor doing here after hours? And why is he wearing these old clothes? So it looked like an I'm actual person? It was an actual person. The full shape, body, everything. There was no, you couldn't see through him. It was a solid person to the best of my knowledge. And I'm looking at him. And I was just going to go over after and talk to him. But I'm filling the tank right now, so I can't leave the tank. And the phone rang. Our main phone rang. Look. So when our, thing, our main phone line rang, I looked through the glass into the control room where our phone was. And I looked back at the old man, and he was gone. He was gone. I finished filling the tank. And I went over to the chemical tank where he was, standing against, looking at it. There was a big black handprint on the tank that was not there. This is a brand new tank just installed by contractors. There were no marks on it. Now there's this. I took a picture. I'm trying to find it. And we're going to try to get that one. To you also great but it, so, it, isn't that something so that's so who, were you able to get the handprint off of the tank i have or is picture. it permanently there uh here's the funny thing i uh, 
I had trouble getting it off with chemicals. I couldn't remove it. We had another maintenance worker work on it. And she did work on it hard, and she was finally able to get it off, but it took a lot of work. It was a uh, some sort of a, 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 a heavy-duty impression stain that didn't want to come off easily. She did get it off. And there's more. Another co-worker came on a Saturday with his wife to take pictures outside the old building with them the building as the backdrop, of course. And he there with his wife and a a friend took their picture. They took their picture and then they came up to the building running. I was in this main building, the new building. They showed me the picture. There was a face of like, the best I can describe it is a demon in the glass behind them, the glass window. Oh, I'm getting chills. This is creepy. Oh, my goodness. They were shaken up by that. And I don't blame them. And I, I, uh, I went down to that building after, and I was standing right in the window where that demon's face was. And, uh, again, that doesn't look like Mr. Negus, who looks like the old-time act, who looks like Wyatt Earp. Mr. Negus, you'll see. He looks like Wyatt Earp. And the old man looks like Spencer Tracy. So that was a different person. The, the girl was about eight years old. And, uh, and it, 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 it's unbelievable. The other incident happened. There was a man, a co-worker. He went down to the other building. A calm day. He opened the door and a lightning bolt shot across the length of the building a thin lightning bolt. He came back up and told me about it. And I went down there again. There was nothing, but he insisted there was a lightning bolt. Inside the building? Inside the building. That shot from one end of the building to another and disappeared. Um, I, I can't. That's, that's what he said, and he stuck with that. The um, Now, for me, this is an interesting one. I was just telling Iman. It was on my birthday uh, a year or two ago. I was in the building on a Saturday morning. It was a beautiful day. It was all by myself. And I was getting samples in the filter room. Now, the, every room has telephones, but they're in-house phones. In other words, you use them to call office to office. Right. They're not outside lines. They can't make phone calls or anything, right? Well, I'm in the room on my birthday. I'm walking by filter number two. Filter number two rang. The phone rang and rang right as I walked by it. I picked it up. No one was there. Just a hum, and I hung up. But just the fact that it rang is very strange. Because it can't ring unless somebody's calling from another room to call me. Another phone in the plant. And there's nobody in the plant but me. Wow. Very strange. The ghost just wanted to wish you happy birthday. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's exactly the way I figure it. Um, (laughs) And then another one. This happened to me, again, this was, uh, it was uh, not this past summer, the summer before. I was with a co-worker, and I went down to the other building, the old building, and I went taking readings. Again, on that infamous second floor mezzanine, the door slammed right behind me, where it slammed right behind me, and the uh, tanks that uh, we had to bleed down that pulled the can out of the co-worker's hand and right next to Mr. Negus's picture. Well, it was crooked. The picture was crooked on the wall. And I said, oh, that's odd. So I straightened his picture out and I said, Mr. Negus, I straightened out your picture. It's a beautiful day. We don't want any problems. Let's keep it like that. And I turned around. And all the power went down in the building, 
and in the main building, both buildings, completely out of power. And my coworker called me on my phone to tell me this. We have no power, Bob, anywhere. Come up here. And I went back up to the building. We had to reset the plant. Don't you find that odd? Yes. <laughs> now, do you feel like it's they're just mischievous, or do you think these ghosts are menacing? What do you think their intent is? He was definitely mischievous. I felt like he was telling me, I'm going to do what I want, Bob. <laughs> You're not going to tell me what to do about this plan. And he just decided a little trick. I'm going to take the power out and you're going to have to restart the plant. I am a believer now. I am definitely a believer. Something, something is going on at that facility. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he, he died on his last day there. Wow. This was amazing, Bob. Thank you so much. Yes. Great stories. Okay. Thank you so much. We'd like to again thank our guests from El Paso Water and the new Bedford Water Department. We very much enjoyed these legends of ghostly hauntings at your treatment facilities. I still get chills just picturing that ghostly girl singing in the corner. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and one thing that happened during the recording of this podcast that is worth mentioning when we were speaking to Bob Melanson about his experiences Right after he mentioned the photograph with the demon face, the phone line that he was calling in on dropped the call for no reason. He attributed it to the ghost having a little fun. I bet many of our listeners out there have their own engineering legends. We'd love to hear from you. Please send your feedback, stories, and ideas for future episodes. You can reach out at info at b-r-w-n-c-a-l-d dot com. This podcast was brought to you by Brown and Caldwell. It's our purpose and our passion to safeguard water, maintain infrastructure, and restore habitats to keep our communities thriving. Until next time.